All right, thanks everybody for joining. Um, as Julie said, my name is Sean Pimentel. I am a systems engineer here at Digium. Um, as she said, I've been working here for a long time. Actually, before I was in college, Digium put me through college. <laughs> um, been to several Astrocons, and I see a couple of familiar faces out there. So, uh, some new faces as well. That's that's good. That's exciting. Um, yeah, I've been working at Digium for a long time. Done a lot of things. Um, I started with very little Linux or Asterisk knowledge and kind of worked my way uh, through the different realms, if you will. Um, I've done lots of testing, I've done certifications on several different um, IP products, whether that be phones or gateways or any kind of telephony devices like that. So I'm very familiar with this process. Um, uh, just wanted to take a few minutes today and uh, talk about the Digium phones and why they are uh, so good in an asterisk environment. Um, kind of wanted to set the stage and preface the topic with, um, in my experience working at Digium and working with Asterisk, um, most of the phones, that IP phones that we deal with, not analog phones, um, they behave as phones. You can make phone calls, um, maybe you can get some BLF keys to work and rapid dial. Um, if you're really, really good with XML, you can do some other kind of fancy stuff, but um, they're very limited in, in their capacity of what they can do. Um, and that's the mindset that our engineers had when they decided to build a phone um, for Asterisk. So that's what we set out to do, and that's what we did. We built a phone that is specifically for people who have very niche needs um, in the telecom market and want an easy, powerful phone to use, right? So that's what we've gone after. Um, and hopefully uh, I can kind of um, express the different ways um, this phone can do what it can do, or these phones anyway. <clears throat> so first off is they are very easy to install. I'll talk a little bit about the DPMA module a bit later, later on. That's kind of a special sauce, if you will. Um, it's a module that will add to asterisk to make our phones have even more capabilities. <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to go real quickly, since you guys don't have phones, physical phones to look at here, I'm just going to show you which ones we have. Uh, I do encourage all of you to make it to the Digium booth uh, when the opening happens, I believe at 5 o'clock, and uh, get a physical feel for the phones. Um, they're super high quality, that's definitely a focus we put into our phones. Um, we didn't go for the low end market type uh, segment, we went directly for high quality, uh, um, very powerful, easy to use phones. <coughs> So this is our D40, it's kind of the baseline model. It's got two, uh, one line key, can be two line keys if you want. You can make that second line key a rapid dial. Um, and then four feature keys. Uh, we have gigabit versions of this phone as well. We call it the D45. Um, so there are dual NICs on the back of the phone. <coughs> Uh, there is the D50, which is kind of mid-level. It's got the sidecars you can see on the sides. So you can add uh, up to 10 rapid dial keys there. It does have the, the funny little uh, uh, paper cutout uh, to put your rapid dial information in there. Um, but the phone itself will generate that information based on your contacts in your Asterisk server. Um, so that's really cool. <clears throat> the D70, that's our executive level phone. This is the big phone that has uh, the sidecar as well, except this one's an LCD screen. And you can see the two buttons down at the bottom right there. Uh, there are page left and right. You actually have 10 pages, so you have 100 total contacts uh, on this sidecar. And since it's an LCD uh, screen, that information can be updated dynamically. All right, so I'll talk a little bit about Smart BLF, which is a really cool feature in our phones, where you can actually kind of customize those keys to do a whole lot more than just dial things. Um, We'll talk a bit about that. <clears throat> uh, the one cool thing uh, that I like the most about the, uh, the D70 phone is it's got all of the buttons right there on the front since it has more real estate. Um, we even have a button for apps where you can click that and go execute your custom applications, which you can build and run directly on the phone. Um, that is one cool thing about our phones is that they are basically, uh, they're basically little Linux computers. No, we don't give you root access to the phone. Um, but we do allow you to run JavaScript directly on the phone rather than having to send out XML requests and wait for responses and just display basically a web page, um, which isn't any fun. <clears throat> uh, 
the context-sensitive keys, uh, the reason I wanted to touch on this is they are dynamic. They'll change based on uh, what is on the LCD screen. Um, but if you cr create your own custom apps that are running, when, they're dis when those custom apps are displayed in the foreground, you actually have the ability to change those soft keys to be basically whatever you like. Um, you have complete control there. <coughs> Uh, the icon keys, this is uh, available to people who uh, kind of want to generalize the phone or, or maybe are standardizing on this phone across multiple different markets. We've taken the English language off um, and just made them icon based. We found that people who, you know, being used to cell phones, generally more receptive to this. This is the direction that most everyone is going. Um, so we have converted all of these phones to uh, icon key available phones. And all the phones are HD voice capable. They have G729 built in. Um, all the bells and whistles that you're looking for. <clears throat> so the easiest provisioning um, is basically, we're making that statement because our phones come with a module called uh, DPMA, which stands for the Digium Phone Module for Asterisk. This is a binary module that we've created. It um, uses the SIP messaging protocol. It's encrypted to talk back and forth with the phones and keep data and status information alive. So this is a, a push and pull type situation where you can push information to the phone or pull information from it using the DPMA module. Again, it's all encrypted, uh, so you don't have to worry about um, passwords or any, any of that type of information during the configuration process getting passed. Now, RTP stream, actual audio going from asterisk to the phone, that can be encrypted, but it isn't encrypted by default. It's just up to you. Um, but really, the magic that DPMA provides is uh, uh, many factors, but the main one in relation to provisioning is it uses a service called uh, Avahi or Bonjour or MDNS, if any of you are familiar with that. It's basically a broadcast service. So you take this DPMA, this, this module, and you install it in your Astra server, and it basically brings this Astra server alive broadcasts it on the network for all phones to see. So your, your admin can spool up your asterisk box, put the DPMA module in there, create all the users, whether they're SIP users or PJ SIP users or however you're configuring it today, and those will be broadcast on the network. You take an empty phone out of the box directly from uh, the retailer, plug it into the, the switch that the same network that the uh, asterisk server is on, and the phone will find that server. It'll come up on the screen. The very first thing it'll do is say, hey, these are all of the Astra servers that I've found. Um, choose the one that you want to configure this phone with. It'll choose the server, and you'll be presented with a list of users. And through that list of users, you can choose, hey, this is you know, Alice's phone. Go down to her user, click Alice, and that phone will just be provisioned. You don't have to go through the uh, web interface. You don't have to write any XML documentation. Uh, none of that stuff. It's all easily and controlled within Asterisk, um, which is very, very, very handy. Um, now, that's to say that is the way you can do it. Our phones do also behave like generic, regular SIP phones. So you can take a regular Digium phone and pull it out of the box, plug it up to a network, and go to the web interface and put in a username and put in a password and you know change some settings. You can do that as well. Um, you can also do it via XML if you do want to write XML or if you have facilities already set up for that type of thing, if you're using other phones um, and that's what you're comfortable with. We do have that as well. Our phones will do all of those in addition to DPMA. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the configuration is very, very simple. Um, if you're an asterisk admin and you've been dealing with asterisk, you'll, you'll, you'll see this, that it's very familiar to you. Uh, the configuration files are just like any others in asterisk. They're key value pair configuration files. There's two main components um, to the configuration file for DPMA, and that's the um, phone component and the line component. And we've separated these two out so that you can have global settings basically for the phone to make it behave some way, um, do some language or use some context list. Uh, and then you can have the line section where you can have multiple lines. If you have you know, a D70, you can have 
you know, six lines, different individual lines on the right side of the phone. Um, so it makes it very simple, very easy to uh, maintain. If you're an admin and you use a real-time environment, you're storing all your configurations in a database, lends itself to that, right? It's just another asterisk configuration file to be stored in the database and shared that way. <clears throat> um, there, you'll notice one thing about these configurations. If you've ever dealt with SIP or PJ SIP, you'll see a lot of the analogous options. Um, there are, it's up to you which ones you want to use. Uh, you can use some of the configurations in SIP, some in the phone, uh, or in DPMA, but I do recommend uh, kind of keeping all your configurations on the DPMA side of the house. <clears throat> um, another really cool thing that the DPMA provides to our phones is present status. So again, this is a, an encrypted, con a cr encrypted connection from our phones to Asterisk, and it passes back and forth uh, very rich amounts of data. So again, as I said, working with other vendors' phones uh, in an Asterisk environment, it, they're very limited capacity, right? So you'd buy this really nice uh, IP phone, it'd have all these buttons and all these functions and features, and you'd hook it up to your Asterisk box, wouldn't do anything, right? Okay, I could set do not disturb, and that's about it, right? Uh, with the DPMA and the integration to our phones, we really take, a, um, we take advantage of the status um, device status that's inside of Asterisk. So you can actually see when a phone is off hook. Um, you can see you know, when they're dialing. All the different status pieces are transmitted back and forth between Asterisk and the phone and you can make decisions based on that. So not only can you do do not disturb, but you can set information based on I don't know how you're away on vacation or you're away at lunch and you want your call rules to change depending on that. Like I have several statuses on my phone at Digium where I say, you know, I'm available and all calls will come directly to my, my desk phone. Or if I say in a meeting, you know, the calls will immediately go to my voicemail and they won't even ring my phone. Uh, and I have several different statuses for different things. <clears throat> depending on how I want my calls to be routed to, depending on what I'm doing. Um, a good thing to, to say about status is since we have DPMA in the box and it's pulling a list of configured users based on your other configuration files, um, you actually get all the list of users that you created populated directly into your contacts app. So I'll take a, a, a minute a little bit later on to talk about the different apps on the phone. Uh, but one of the main apps is the contacts app. And inside this app, again, has all of the contacts that are on the system. And it's not, you don't need to rely on the user to go update this contacts page. It's just going to be updated by um, the system admin or whatever configuration tool you're using for adding those, inf those users into the Astra system. Um, also inside this contacts app, you'll see to the right, um, or to the left, go back up. On the left side there, you can actually see their status. So you can see inside that contacts app what the status is of the person that you're trying to reach before you actually try to reach them. Um, on the left side, you can see you know, available, do not disturb, away. You can set those things directly from the contacts app, um, or from the status app. <clears throat> and the, uh, the contacts is really, it, it'll be your go-to source for finding someone. Uh, and to be quite honest, it's my favorite feature about the phone. Um, at Digium, you know, as with a lot of other companies, you'll want to go reach somebody. Maybe they're a new employee or uh, there's somebody you need to, to reach out to um, and you haven't worked with in a while. And you know their name, but you don't necessarily know their extension. And the last thing you want to do is go to a company directory wiki page somewhere uh, and go look that up or go find an email and try to find their extension at the bottom. You can just go to the contacts app and start dialing their name and it will pull them up. Right, it'll pull up all the people that it, it thinks there are, pull them up, just hit it, and it dials off to them. Right? And of course, you can see the status of that person before you actually dial them. <clears throat> so here's a couple of uh, good screenshots of that status app, so you can kind of see the different people in the list. You could see their current status. Um, and uh, this di or this. Uh, illustration down at the bottom left here, you can see the phone icon on the far right there. That's the presence being propagated from Asterisk to the phone. So we can see in real time that uh, the park, uh, that, you know, Malcolm Davenport is, you know, on hook. He's good, he's good to go. You can call him 
Um, and then you can see up at the top that some of the people have statuses that it can't find. So maybe that phone's off offline or um, unplugged or something like that. <clears throat> um, inside the contacts app, if you go to a, a specific person uh, contact, you can hit the more button. So those contact soft keys that I was talked about. You hit the more button and it'll give you more information about that user. It may give you their full uh, full DID. May give you it'll give you their status and, and all that stuff as well. And then you can manipulate that information and put more in there if you want uh, from the Astros admin side. So another really cool app that's built into our phones when you're using the DPMA is the Visual Voicemail app or the Advanced Messaging app. Uh, this app will basically look at your voicemail box that you have configured inside of, of Astros, tell you how many uh, messages you have, It'll tell you how long those messages are. It'll basically give you the whole envelope of what you're normally used to. So maybe you got a voicemail, you see the MWI blinking on your phone, and then it comes up in your email and you can list it there. If you don't, use, if you don't do that, if you don't like uh, using it from your email, you'll have this visual voicemail app <coughs> to get to. And on yeah, all the phones, there is a dedicated key for this voicemail app. And I should say, you don't have to use this voicemail app. You can switch it and go back to the, to the old school style. Uh, I know even at Digium, we work with a lot of customers who don't want to change and like to use their old DTMF ways of doing things, and that's perfectly fine here. The voicemail app has the flexibility of saying, present visual voicemail, or when someone clicks this button, just dial the voicemail main extension, uh, which you're all probably very familiar with. <coughs> um, some of the advanced things you can do with the Visual Voicemail app is not only do you get a list of all your voicemails, but of course you can listen to them there. You can fast forward, rewind, delete. Um, there's a callback button. Um, yeah, you can forward those voicemails on all directly from basically the Visual Voicemail interface. <clears throat> we have the uh, call log app. This app will uh, aggregate all of your missed, placed, um, incoming, outgoing calls. Um, it'll tell you which direction they went, who you called, what time, uh, and you can kind of filter down if you want. Um, but it's a very, you know, it's a very standard thing that people expect to have on a phone, and we've just made it that much easier to use with all of the uh, contact soft keys to go back and forth between them. Um, another really advanced thing that you'll find in our phone um, that's not very common is we have one touch call parking. This is a call parking app that uh, if you've used call parking in the past, um, call parking is kind of like advanced hold, right? So you place a call on hold, you can actually walk to another place in the building and pick that call up, right? You don't have to be at the same handset. And in the past, if you're using an asterisk system with generic phones, um, you're probably done call parking via the old DTMF way, where you're on the phone with somebody, you're gonna say, hey, uh, you know, you're on the, on the phone with tech support for Dell, and you need to go run and check something on the server. You can say, hey, let me put you on hold, I'll go pick you up when I'm in the server room, and you would hit something like, you know, star nine, or, you know, star star two, or whatever you have it set up as. And then Alice, Allison would speak back to you, you know, call parked on 701, and then you would have to, you know, place the call on hold, or on the, on the hook, and then the caller will start getting music on hold. You can run to the lab, go to the lab phone, pick up the lab phone, and then talk, uh, dial the call parking extension, and uh, hit in 701, and then you can pick that person up. But you'd have to remember the par call parking, and you have to go through kind of the, the DTMF and the, the audio menus, and it was just a time consuming and somewhat clumsy process. Um, the call parking app kind of eliminates all that. It makes everything visual and it's right on the phone. So say you're on a call and you're in that same situation, you need to run to the lab and go pick that call up, there's a button, there's a soft key button right there that says park. You just hit that, it tells you on the screen what uh, parking lot it's in and the caller will hear music on hold. You run to the lab, pick up the phone, hit the parking app and there it is, 701. Just click answer and it'll pick it up right there. You don't have to go through all the menus and do all that stuff. So that's a, uh, that's a really, really cool feature that I've enjoyed about our phones. Uh, one touch call recording, kind of the same scenario. Uh, in the past, you had to use DTMF type features to 
to get these uh, calls to become recorded. On our phones, we have a recording app, so when you're on a live call, you just hit the record button, and boom, it gets recorded. All right? It'll get saved in uh, your normal uh, sounds directory, where all the other sound files are and recordings are saved, and then you can manage them how you will after that. Okay, uh, call cues. This is another really cool app on our phone that, again, comes directly with the phone. You don't have to pay any extra for any of these things. They're built directly into the phone as long as you're using the DPMA module. Uh, I know I've said that a few times, but that's really important. The, the reason we can offer these advanced features in the phone is because of that rich information that we can pass via D DPMA from the phone to asterisk and vice versa, right? So the Call Cues app is a kind of a, a simple one-stop shop for your, for your call center, right? So if you're an admin or even if you're just a call center employee, this, this app would be really useful for you. You can actually log in and out of queues that you're a part of using this app. Um, if you're an admin, you can see who all is logged into the queue, how many callers are there, how long callers have been waiting. Um, I mean, obviously it's not your, uh, it's not the place to get information for your end of the month review of, of call statistics, right? You'll get those information, that information somewhere else. But on, on, you know, in real time, on the fly, needing useful information, it's really, really helpful. Um, you, it can view multiple queues at once, so it's not an issue. You know, if you're part of tier one and tier two, or if you're part of support and sales, um, it handles that just fine. Um, just make sure I don't miss anything. You can also pa pause there as well. You know, agent login, agent log out. You can do that directly, and you have buttons for pause and unpause as well. So custom applications. I alluded a, a little bit of this at the beginning of the, the talk. <clears throat> uh, like I said, our phones are, are basically little Linux computers. Of course, you don't have root access to them, but you can write programs that run directly on the phone. And this ties really well into Smart BLF. So Smart BLF is a concept that we have uh, implemented on our phones that allows you to manipulate the rapid dial keys. So no longer do the keys on the right side of your phone, whether it's the D50 or the D70 that has, you know, big sidecar, 100 keys, um, no longer are those just normal rapid dial keys where you click a button and it starts dialing whoever is a part of that key. These keys become completely customizable, right? So the LEDs have uh, a few different colors, green, um, yellow, and red, I believe are the, the three colors. Um, and they have different states. So they have fast blinking, slow blinking, off, steady. Um, and then they have different tactile feedbacks. So they have quick press, uh, uh, or short press and long press. Um, and all of those can be manipulated how you want. So you can do some really fun things. So you can have a, basically a key on the right side of your phone that when you hold it down, um, it will log everyone who's in a queue out of a queue. That sounds weird, right? That's, you don't do that with phones. That's just an example of what you can do. So basically, the Smart BLF allows you to use the different colors, the different tactile feedbacks of the phone, and even the information that's displayed uh, inside of the LCD panel. You can customize that to whatever you want. If you wanted to execute an external application that runs on some server, okay, that's fine. Um, so you can make it very, very useful. Um, and you can make it behave dynamic. So you can have, if you, don't, if you want to kind of ease people into this concept of using rapid dial keys as something other than rapid dial keys, you can make it so it is a normal rapid dial key. It has Joe Bob's number there and you want to click the button to dial him, um, that's fine, you can do that. Or say you're on a call and you need to transfer a call to Joe Bob. So instead of hitting the transfer button um, and doing a attended transfer over there, you can make it so that you hold down the, the button next to his rapid dial key and the long press of it will do a blind transfer rather than an attended transfer. That's a very simple example, but you can make it do basically anything you want. They're completely customizable. Um, and that's, that's really the, the, the crux of why we like to say that the Digium phones, well, the, the Digium phones are the 
phone for asterisk, right? So asterisk kind of feeds off this notion of being in niche markets and, and filling a demand and doing exactly what you needed to do. You know, it's not cookie cutter out of the box. Um, you know, it doesn't do anything out of the box. You've got to tell it what to do. And the phones somewhat take that concept as well. They're a little bit nicer. They do a lot of stuff right out of the box. Um, but they do give you that flexibility and that capability. Um, some, of the few, some of the cool things that I've seen, again, kind of logging everybody out of the queue. I had an a admin guy who had several different buttons because um, he didn't really talk on his phone a lot, but he had a lot of things to do with the phone system. He had several different buttons that maintained the phone system. He had one for recording a new uh, uh, message of the day that gets broadcast on the IVR. Um, he had one for setting when, um, uh, when there was a, like an outage, like if the, the school was shut down or, or whatever that is, you could hit that button and boom, things would get changed over. Um, so it's extremely, extremely powerful. Um, and that ties right into the custom apps because the custom apps can be run directly on the phone and they're JavaScript based so you can actually manipulate what goes on with the buttons and inside the phone by building custom apps. Um, and this is all open API. It's all on, you can get to it by phones.digium.com. Um, I would also kind of steer you toward wiki.asterisk.org. Um, that's where a lot of this information is going to be as well. Um, I would I would really like to hear from people um, who have ideas on what they'd like to do with custom apps on the phones or kind of needs they have for very custom niche creations um, for people who are using the phone. Um, <laughs> I'd really like to see someone build one with a key system type emulation. That's going to be a little bit difficult, but I'd, I'd love to challenge someone to do that. That would be really cool. <clears throat> Yeah, some of the other features here, I just wanted to touch on uh, real quickly. Um, it has, the phones have multiple locale support, so we support English, Spanish, Italian, French, German, all that right out of the box. Um, uh, customized ringing, that's probably a pretty common thing to you, but um, you can do it in a very customized way with our phones. So again, I mean, you could have a rap and dial key that changes your ringtone whenever you press that rap and dial key. You know, it's very flexible. Not a, not a great use case, but kind of shows you the power there. <clears throat> uh, preferences controls. You have control as an admin over the phone, so you can uh, dictate what users have, the, have access to and what do not have access to. Um, so that's extremely useful uh, from an admin perspective. Um, the registration host failover. Uh, this is a, something that, that dictates how the phone behaves when it can't reach its main registrar. So. Um, in a lot of situations, especially in bigger office environments and uh, industrial environments, phones are extremely important. And if they go down, if for whatever reason they go down, um, that's a very bad thing. And with our phones, we can, do, we can do dual registration. So basically our phone will be registered to your primary server. And if for any reason that primary server dies, uh, catches fire or the switch you know, blows up or whatever it is, our phones can fall back and then uh, rely on an alternate registration to a secondary server. Um, if that secondary server doesn't have DPMA, um, uh, you could have limited uh, features with the phone. So the phone will, will make phone calls, but you won't be able to see queues and, and status and, and those types type of things. But you will be able to make phone calls. You'll be able to receive phone calls. You'll be able to dial 911 if, that, if that's what's needed. Um, so it's an extremely important and, and very cool feature. Um, the remote reconfigure, this is something that since all, since the module inside of, of Asterisk, DPMA, can control the phone and has this data that's passed back and forth, um, you can actually control the phone with DPMA. So rather than sending, uh, you know, not everybody's done this, but a lot of people have, especially from the admin side who are very SIP aware, they've had to send specific SIP packets to the phone to make it do things like reboot, right? So you'd have to send it some like SIP notify, say, hey, I want you to reboot now. Um, with DPMA, you can actually do that from Asterisk. So you can go to the Asterisk console and say, you know, reconfigure all phones, and then all the phones in the building will, will reboot essentially. Um, and that's the concept there. And it's, again, that's an encrypted connection between the phone and Asterisk. So there's no issue with anyone inter interceding those packets or seeing any of the information inside of, of whatever you're sending to the phone. 
Um, connected line updates, the phones uh, do support that. Connected line updates were something that was added in asterisk, I believe, 1.8. Um, so our phones will pick that up off the bat as well. So if you're doing anything with connected line appearance or connected uh, uh, updates, you'll get those via the P-asserted um, identity header. Uh, multiple network supports, that's another good one. Um, a lot of people run multiple VLANs and like to segment their traffic out. You can actually have phones be a part of multiple networks. So if you have a, 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 a VLAN or a network set specifically for um, telephony infrastructure, the server or proxies or whatever it is, and then you have a separate VLAN that's QoS or, or, or built specifically for phones, you can mesh those together. So you can have the phone cross networks and go to the second network and be able to still reach the server. So that's uh, just a little admin foo there, if you will. Okay, so that's kind of my uh, presentation on the phones, um, how they're powerful, what they can do. Um, I know this was kind of quick, but I was very late, and I do apologize. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I have to show, and I would love to answer some questions if anyone has any. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. No, because actually the broadcast is happening just from the server itself. The, the phones aren't broadcasting out. It's the server that's broadcasting its, its space. So unless you have 500 servers broadcasting, I wouldn't, amount, I wouldn't imagine the traffic would be uh, um, uh, that hectic. Yeah. Um, and if I didn't say it before, the protocol that we use for broadcasting is MDNS. So it's a, it's a standard protocol that a lot of people use. Uh, Mac calls it Bonjour, I believe. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very stable uh, standard broadcasting protocol. There was a question over there. Absolutely. Yeah, and I would, I would actually, I would say that Smart BLF is probably the most, apart from the custom apps, um, it's the most flexible and powerful piece to the phone. <laughs> you can kind of get yourself, I, I would say that whatever, you're, you, whatever you want to do with Smart BLF, test it thoroughly before you put it out in the wild, because it has so many options. You can, you can do basically anything you want. Yeah. Uh, I will say there's a, there's a little bit of a limit on uh, what information you want to display on the LCD screen, but as far as uh, what the keys do and when they do it and how they behave is is entirely up to you. Hmm, I don't know the answer to that one, but I will find that out. Let me uh, take that down. <clears throat> Okay, and you have a question? Yeah. system app, if you want to connect, we have tabs as well as Microsoft Active Directory so that you can pull the contacts. Would you provide a custom app or it is available in this and phone? Um, yeah, so today that's, that's not something that's built directly into the phone. Um, if you're wanting to connect to Microsoft uh, Exchange server or or whatever it is, you, to pull your contacts basically from a global directory. That's not something that's built in, but that is something you can do with the custom apps in the phone. I'm sorry? Utilizing the custom apps. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can do it that way. You can use the custom apps inside the phone. Uh, um, yeah, yes. <laughs> I would say there's, there's other ways to skin that cat, if you will. Sure. Yeah, we, we've heard that a lot. Uh, a lot of people <clears throat> end up solving that problem multiple different ways. Maybe they do it from the admin side, right? So they actually go to the asterisk level, uh, they build a, a connector that t connects to Active Directory, pulls the users in, builds contacts lists, and then propagates those to the phone using DPMA. But if you wanted to cut that out and do it directly on the phone, you could. Yeah. Um, I would say depending on how many contacts you wanted to display at a time, you may have some uh, uh, 
resource issues, <laughs> you know, because I've seen big environments with thousands of users where they want to have a global directory of all thousand users at once, and it's asking a bit much. But yes, absolutely, you can. Yeah. Sir. The languages, uh, I would say that those are probably on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, if you have a need for a specific language in the phone, I would love for you to come talk to me about it. I, I could get that to the right people. Um, there aren't mechanisms built into the phone to make it easy for you to localize the phone yourself, if that's what you mean. Um, with the phones, I haven't seen a crowdsourced localization effort. Uh, I have with Asterisk. I've seen people do it. Um, but I'd be open to that. I'd love to hear more about that. I saw another hand somewhere. Over here, pointing to that guy. Yeah. Yes. This actually can work in the cloud environment. Um, the little caveat there is, um, obviously you can't broadcast the presence of a server <laughs> over the internet, right? Um, but there is a, um, you, can, you can set up a very basic Option 66 XML configuration file that's basically a one-liner file that tells the phone where to go reach the DPMA server. So basically you set up this little provisioning server, but the only XML you have to write is go talk to the server that actually configures the phone. Um, and you can do it that way. And that's the way we do it in, in our cloud environment. That, that too, yeah. <laughs> but as an admin, you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So we don't, have a, we don't have a feature that we label as hot desking because that, that means different things to different people. Um, what I'll say is the way that phones are provisioned with DPMA and the, the addition of the reconfigure option on the phones is essentially hot desking. So at the end of the day, you're done working in your cube and you've taken all the calls, you're ready to go home and someone's gonna come take your spot. You just go to the menu and hit reconfigure for the phone. Um, it will take the phone down and bring it back up and it'll just, just ready for the next person to choose their user and the phone will be reprovisioned re as that user. And you can, I, I kind of talked over it real, real, real quickly, it, it, that is the process. It finds the server, gets a list of users, choose the user, it's provisioned. But you can have layers of security in there. So if someone needs to enter their voicemail password or some assignment code or, or whatever it is, you can, you can add that. It's not, it's not completely open, it's up to you. It'd be done through DPMA. It'd be done through DPMA. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I, I got handset and chassis. <laughs> To configure the phone to to ring the handset. Oh, okay. Um, I I don't know the answer to that one off the top of my head. That's that's a little bit specific for me to just answer, but I I can find that out for sure. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? Uh, yes? What's the, what's the required version for the feature? Oh, it's a, it's a good question. I, I believe it's 1.8 and later um, um, for asterisk, yeah, to, to install DPMA on. Uh, actually, I think there may have even been, 
yeah, there was a 1.6 Digium phones version uh, that you could have used. But I, basically, 1.8 and on, it's, it, you're fine. Which version are you running? Yeah, 1.8. Okay, good. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't say 1.4. <laughs> All right. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, I guess I could do a little quick survey here. How many of you have used or have Digium phones today? Pretty good. Um, do you use them or do you use DPMA with them at all? Raise your hand. Yeah? Okay. Have you written any custom apps for the phone? I want to talk to you. <laughs> Okay, which school system? Okay, yeah, we've done a lot with school systems lately, so that's, that's really interesting. Okay. Well, that's what I have. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions, but if not, then meeting adjourned. Good. Thanks a lot. <laughs>